There's an eight minute video from Erratic Gaming. It's called What's Wrong with PvP from a Hard Stuck Duelist? Let's see. From the viewpoint of someone who's been Hard Stuck Duelist for about six seasons now. Before we get into the video, I kind of want to go over my background so you know okay. what kind of player I am and why I'm qualified to speak on this. Let's Throughout see. My experience in WoW, I've been into PvP every once in a while, but never anything serious until Shadowlands Season 1. I saw the PvP Elite plate set and I knew I had to have it. Turn it up? Okay, I'll turn it up. Just give me one moment. For my first 1800 and I was able to achieve it in twos. I played the rest of Shadowlands mostly focusing on twos and was able to get Duelist in season two through four of Shadowlands. I never really thought about Gladiator, although I always thought the mounts were cool. And season four of Shadowlands is the first time I dipped my toes into 3v3 rated arenas. Okay. I didn't get very high, but I met my current teammates during that season. And we all decided that season one of Dragonflight was the first time we were actually going to push rating and the Gladiator title. Now, before I get into what is wrong with PvP, I kind of want to go over what I think is right with PvP. And okay, why I start off a little nice, you know? They call that the feedback sandwich. You know what I mean? You want to have a piece of bread. That is a very positive thing. And then you get into the meat and potatoes of the things you don't like. That's the cheese and the meat. And then you end it with another piece of compliment bread. That's how you give feedback. Psychology, friends. I play this mode even though there's a lot of negativity surrounding the game mode. PvP in World of Warcraft has become my favorite PvP game mode in any game. The game what is he playing here? He's playing Warlock Feral. Games are complex and fun, and I actually think PvP has been decently balanced. Of course, there's been crazy periods of time where certain specs just dominate the ladder, but over the course of Dragonflight, I think every class has one or more specs they can play, and it's not just one comp completely That's a boomy, dominating sorry. the ladder. Rated arenas are a great and easy mode to get in and out of. Specifically for twos and threes, you can queue for a match, play a five, maybe ten at max minute game. Gotta get those healing streams down, bro. And then if you need to go, you can go. You're not stuck trying to find a group for a keystone that may or may not end in an hour. And the worst case scenario, if you have to leave in the middle of an arena, is one game loss. There really is nothing more fun in World of Warcraft than playing rated threes with people that you enjoy. I and agree. That can probably be said about any of the game modes in World of Warcraft. But for me, rated threes is really where it's at. That being cool. Being said, I kind of want to go into what I think is wrong with rated PvP, even though I don't really have a lot of answers on how it can be fixed. The first thing I want to talk about is season to season progression. Like I said, Dragonflight was the first time I decided I wanted to get into 3v3 arenas, and we were amped. It was going to be the start of the expansion, which is usually the most inflated, but Solo Shuffle was also being released. So the first season of Dragonflight, rated threes had dropped dramatically from what we saw in Shadowlands season ones and two. It was fine. We still did a good job pushing. We got, I, I can't even remember, but it was around 2k in our first season. But as Dragonflight went on, participation in the game mode went down, and even though we were improving season this season our rating was not reflecting that in season two we played a more meta comp and we worked really really hard on it and we ended up with a rating of about 2150 if i recall correctly yeah. we had improved drastically from season one to two and all we had was about 50 points of cr to show for it take that on to season three i was constantly looking for more experienced players to help me with my gameplay i even got vod reviews from cdu who drastically helped me improve my game with that being said playing with the same players we never really got higher than what we had gotten in season two this lack of progression season to season is very demoralizing even when you know what the cause of it is because you know you're improving at the game but the numbers don't show it and the numbers are what the rewards are tied to that's true i've been saying this guys i've been saying this for such a long time like you guys this is a problem okay this is my own experience okay playing a lot of healers in season one and i don't care who you are this is a problem if you think this is not a problem you're delusional okay i played healers in season one i played prez evoker i played resto shaman i played dis priest and every single one of those healers i got over 2400 i got elite and i got all the rewards and as the seasons went on going into season two and going into season three i, I improved i got better i'm way better at prez evoker in season three than i was in season one way better and this season, despite playing thousands of games, I actually could not get over 2,400. I got close. I was one game away. I got up to like 2,390, but I actually couldn't get it. 
I played thousands. I'm so much better than I was in season one. And I literally couldn't get it. Ben is delusional. That's called getting old. Dude, Foxy. I was playing against your healers, man. Playing against you with the same MMR. Then, 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 hi. Yo, Matt, thank you for the prime. That is a big problem, guys. Not only are you not gaining the same rewards, like, it's, that's a really shit feeling, right? You get elite, and then it just feels like it's impossible to get. And this isn't just my own experience. This person as well is like, I played the whole expansion. I feel like I'm getting better. I feel like we're improving. And you just can't go up in rating. It's kind of weird. And I think that's it's a problem. It's a big problem in a lot of ways. It's like inflation is tied to player activity. And I think they need to do something about that. In fact, I think the whole the whole reward structure needs to be redone. I, I really do. I think the way it works right now is no good. And I think people making a bunch of alts make it even worse. I think over time with more people, alts being more accessible, which I do think overall is a really good thing. Alts being more accessible has created a huge problem with the current reward structure. And I think it needs to be addressed. They need to redo it. They need to make it more modern. And I think it would be good because the actual gameplay is fun. I actually like playing. Of course, I love it. A lot of people love it, but it doesn't feel good when you can't make any progress in the game. The second problem I have with rated arenas is how important it is to be playing a meta comp. Now you'll have random players who say that you don't need to play the meta to climb rating and it's all about your individual skill levels. Complete bullshit. 100% bullshit. Playing, playing the best comps is all that matters. It's literally like, oh yeah, you can just play whatever and succeed. It's not true. You, like, it's not true. You, you want to play the best comps and when you play the best comps, you are wildly more successful. Okay? Especially in threes but I can tell you for a fact I've met a chase a little bit throughout Dragonflight and literally playing a meta class or meta spec can increase your rating by 1 to 200 points. I didn't mention this earlier but I played Warrior up until Dragonflight and because of solo shuffle queue times I switched to Healer. I played a Resto Shaman in Season 1 and I switched to a Holy Paladin after the rework in Season 2 and was able to completely surpass my Shaman uh, Axum was playing Feral Asa Rogue and beating Boomy meta comps two days ago. Yeah, but okay, that doesn't just because a comp isn't popular doesn't mean it's not good. So like somebody playing some random comp, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect example. Okay, a perfect example is in season three of Shadowlands, I played Windwalker Outlaw Resto Shaman. Okay, I was the only Windwalker monk to get Cosmic Gladiator. Nobody else played that comp, so you could say it wasn't meta, but it was completely OP. <laughs> the comp was insanely OP, and we just steamrolled everyone. They got the easiest rank one I've ever gotten. Just farming everybody. So just because a comp isn't popular doesn't mean it's not good. Because of how good they were in the meta at the time. I think this is probably a problem with any PvP-related game, but I, I think it's still worth mentioning here. And a lot of the issue here is how much communication we get from developers on class balancing and how often PvP gets tuning. PvPers feel absolutely in the dark when it comes to changes in PvP. The community can be outcrying for obvious changes that need to be made, and there's just no feedback. To me, a healthy meta is one that gets changes regularly, and that's just not being done in WoW What's up, Dino? Next up is the button and keybind bloat. Now, I actually think this is what makes PvP fun, is that it's such a complex game mode, and there's so many options on how you can play it. But on my Shaman, I currently have 45 or more keybinds, and I could probably create more if I wanted to be more effective. This is an insane amount of buttons to have to press, and most other PvP game modes have maybe 6 to 10. I think World of Warcraft is just a little bit too complex to achieve. Well, that, that, that isn't necessarily... Okay, so... He is right. You can have a lot of keybinds. You can even have way more keybinds. And the one of the reasons why there's so many keybinds is because of the arena one, two, three and focus functionality, right? So instead of just having polymorph, you have polymorph, focus polymorph, polymorph arena one, polymorph arena two, polymorph arena three, you know? And the same with counterspell. Counterspell, focus counterspell. Counterspell Arena 1, Counterspell Arena 2, Counterspell Arena 3. Now, I don't use all those keybinds, but there are people that do. So if you want to be like absolutely optimal, 
um and just like a rep paladin like as a rep paladin you have you know your sanctuary or your whatever your blessing is sanctuary that removes people from crowd control that's one key bind right that's one ability but you can also be optimal and use party one sanctuary party two sanctuary party three sanctuary you know what i mean so the complication comes from the fact that there you can interact like you used to not be able to do that you couldn't bind arena one two three stuff you could only you could only use uh, just regular target and then they added the focus frame and then they added the arena one, two, three functionality and players get better. They want to be more optimal. And that's one of the reasons why there's so many key binds. Attract new players, which I really think is the root of the problem. Kind of along that same vein are add-ons. Again, this is, might be something that certain players might argue you don't need to play the game mode, but add-ons in World of Warcraft are so powerful. Playing PvP- Yeah, with this is another thing. It's like, you don't need to have you know arena you don't need to have target arena one two three focus arena one two three to play the game but you're at a big disadvantage if you don't it's just like add-ons you don't need add-ons you really don't but somebody that is using add-ons using party ability trackers and omni cd and plate buffs and big debuffs and weak auras and everything is gonna have a big advantage on you so it's like an arms race you don't necessarily need it, but you pretty much need it. Without weak auras is just like shooting yourself in the foot. Knowing when the enemy team has used offensive or defensive cooldowns, as well as knowing when your teammates have used offensive and defensive cooldowns is so important to the game mode. The base UI is very weak in what it shows you. Now, I don't think you just need to remove all add-ons in World of Warcraft in general, but considering every PVP player has a completely different experience based on their UI setup, it doesn't feel like a very fair game mode. Pretty sad that the part of uh, pretty sad that part of the skill in WoW nowadays is how you utilize the information a third-party program gives you. No, really, it gen it really, really is. Like, I don't, I don't even think there's you can't even argue it. Like, <sighs> it, it's an us, man. I agree. Not because every player couldn't get you know, the best add-ons and setup. But even as an experienced player, I'm learning about certain weak wars or add-ons every day that would- No troll that the base UI has wrong information and timers is massively bad for new players. Dude, the, the freaking okay, you guys. They, maybe they fixed this? I don't think they did though. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the arena add-on in the game still doesn't have the 90 second cooldown trinket tracker for arena. I'm pretty sure that's still not updated. It shows the wrong cooldown for the PvP trinket of a healer on the base UI. That's crazy, man. What? It's the UI. How could that be wrong? How could it be wrong for such a long time through the whole season? What? Help improve my gameplay. And when you don't know what you don't know, it's hard to implement those changes. The next issue with World of Warcraft arenas is how important experience is. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a hard stuck duelist and both of my arena partners are as well. We've been duelists for six plus seasons and trying to climb to that next level as three duelist players is extremely hard. I could be wrong, but I don't believe there's a single new gladiator any season recently that has played only with other players who are duelist or less experience. And I can also I would have to verify that. I don't know if I believe that. I think it's probably a very low number and maybe none at all, but I, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, there's some definitely some gladiators, rat warriors and demon hunters, right? For sure. To say this, that when I've played with previous gladiators, that the games are just so much smoother. We've been working our butt offs as the hard stuck duelist to reach that next level, but there's just a certain level of game knowledge that comes from having the experience of being gladiator before that's hard to replicate. How can three duelist players expect to get to the next level when while they're improving their game, so are all the other previous gladiators and multi-glads. I don't think it's absolutely impossible, but it's definitely very, very hard. We're having to beat multi-glads constantly, and this starts as early as 18, 1900 that you see people <laughs> on current season. You're, in, you're 1800? You're 1800 is getting farmed by... <laughs> this is so insane, man. I'll never forget. Who was I playing with? I'm trying to remember who I was playing with. Was it... I think I was playing with... Was I playing with you, Born Good? I think I was playing with Born Good and Isometrics. Oh, it might have been me and Ferrix. 
It was me, Ferex, and like Nick. Yeah, I think it was me, Ferex, and Nick. So Ferex is, you know, whatever. Lots of rank one titles and soul shuffle and threes. We had Big Velkov Dam, who's multi, multi rank one, myself. Uh, and then our opponents. This is a 3v3 game we played. Our opponents were like Magnus, Seralium, and I forget who the healer was, but it was another rank one healer. And we were 2100. And this was like a month before the season ended. A month before the season ended, we had six rank ones just playing at 2100. I actually couldn't help but laugh. Using glad mounts to try to reach even 2400. I would have been ecstatic about 2400, but as you get closer and closer to that 2400 rating range right now, you're facing AWC competitors sometime and people whose gameplay is just out of this world. I don't know what Blizzard's idea of 2400 is, but to me, you shouldn't be facing rank ones until well after the 2400 rating range. And it seems like MMR is the main culprit here for a lot of these issues. But what I think it really boils down to is getting new players to the game mode. So I think that's a big part of it. I think that he just he nailed it right there. Need more people to play. Shuffle has basically killed any incentive to queue rated threes because looking for a group to play with in LFG and queuing sessions just to have them end after one loss is like pulling teeth. Yep. Even though DPS queue times in solo shuffle are 30 minutes sometimes and sometimes even longer, it's the better route to go because you're getting a for sure six games as long as nobody leaves. I don't necessarily think the MMR system is broken. I think what the problem is is there's not enough people playing and something has to be done to attract new players to the game mode. Now, yep. am I beating a dead horse? Maybe. The future rated threes just might not be a thing. We've got... What was that cut? Dude, these cuts are insane. ...to the game mode. Now, am I beating a dead horse? Maybe. The future rated threes... <laughs> what the frick was that, man? ...just might not be a thing. We've got game modes like Plunder Storm, Solo Shuffle, and now the new Rated Battleground Solo queue coming out. And I think all of these things hurt Rated 3 queues. It's a super demoralizing thought, but I'm not giving up hope, and we're going to continue trying to climb as the seasons go on. I'm hoping that with a continued effort, we can improve our skills enough this season to hopefully get a Gladiator title in the first season of The War Within, when participation is usually a little bit higher. If you have any thoughts on what you like about PvP or what you think is wrong with PvP right now, please let me know down in the comments solid video i mean these are these are all it's it's interesting like it's nice to hear from uh this person's perspective right like hardcore hard stuck duelist you know and he didn't seem like a bad player when i was like watching his vods or anything like that it seems super solid and it's someone who actually like this is someone who actually wants to improve <laughs> you know what i mean he's a duelist he wants to improve he wants to get glad he's trying to push and you know the, the you, oh, you would hope there's more people in the game that are like this, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know how... This is not a good... I'm going to do a still frame where his eyes aren't closed. It's a little better. There we go. Man Wrangler, thank you for the prime. Machadi, thank you for the prime. We need more people like this, you know? Like, there needs to be more people like this that are playing. And, you know, hearing some of the issues that they have, I think these are issues that a lot of us have brought up many times. You know, add-ons being crazy, it being kind of complicated to get into, but it's just... It's important, I think, to also say that I, I, you know, there are these issues. I think most of the issues that I have in the game right now are like systems issues. It's not the actual gameplay because like people complain about class balance, but I, I actually believe that class balance is some of the best it's been right now. I think like pretty much every spec is okay and has something it can play and do well with. Um, with the exception of maybe a few, which is rare, right? Like, I think Not class playing, balance is actually better than... Supporting. Oh, thank you, Pluckies. I think class balance is actually better than it has been in a long time. Like, so many specs are viable right now. The gameplay is actually fun, but a lot of these systems are issues. And I think it's important to recognize that, and I think, you know, if some of that stuff gets fixed, it'll be uh, a massive improvement to the game, you know? So, yeah, I like this video.